Oh, hello. I'm back for another one of my videos in which I look at uh, adapted works in the realm of video games. Um, and that's a maybe more complicated way to say I, I look at licensed video games. Uh, that is a video game that uh, in which the essential you know, concept or idea or, or subject is was originally something else, whether it was a book or a movie or, or any other things. I, I think at one point we looked at a game that was based on a fashion brand. So yeah, video games, uh, you know, license properties and stories all the time. It's just a thing that happens. Um, although this time, the meaning of video game, I'm really stretching the meaning of the word of the term video game. This, what I'm looking at today is an interactive video based thing, I guess. Uh, and uh, here you can see this wallpaper uh, seems to have uh, be random, but actually this has a connection to the movie I'm looking at which is the movie called Perfect Days. Um, it's a movie directed by Vim Vender, starring, I think, uh, oh, I don't want to, Koji Yakusho, I think, is the lead actor. It's a movie I've looked, I've watched like 10 times in theaters recently. I think it, it released in the States back in late February, maybe early March, uh, and I watched it a whole bunch. Uh, and really, this video is an excuse for me to talk about this movie uh, some more, because I've been talking to everybody I can about it. Uh, it's really good. Uh, so what I'm looking at today is, I have a precedent for this, is a br is, is a browser experience. I'm going to be loading it in a browser. I've done that before with Goosebumps Enter Horrorland. That, that's a collection of minigames. Uh, an ARG, or augmented reality game, based on one of the Dan Brown books, which was made into a movie. I think it was Origin? No, it wasn't Origin. Uh, Inferno. Inferno. I looked at the uh, promotional website for that, which had some interactive stuff. Uh, and now I'm looking at a promotional website for the movie Perfect Days, which has enough interactive elements that I decided, uh, why not? I'll look at it. So that's a bit of preamble. Let's go ahead and uh, load this thing up if I can. There we go. Uh, so yeah, here uh, the site's loading. You can see some of the clips from this movie. Uh, it features this character, Hirayama, who uh, you just... The whole movie, the concept is you follow this person uh, for like two weeks, roughly two weeks. Uh, you can see there, this experience, I guess, is called Perfect Days, Days of Hirayama. Uh, 353 days in Hirayama's, Hirayama's life, not portrayed in the film. 353. That's more, that's, that means there were more days in the movie than I remembered. But it's roughly two weeks. Uh, apparently, it's a little over two weeks. Um, no, wait, three. Is that, is that math? I, I forget if that's math. No, that, that checks out. Anyway, the movie is uh, very structured because we're following this guy's routine. The movie also has a routine where you wake up in the morning with this character. Uh, you follow him as he wakes up, as he goes to work. He works as a toilet cleaner, public toilet cleaner in uh, around the Shibuya area of Japan. Uh, and you really just go, kind of go along with him, both as he does what he does every day in his routine, but also as these other characters and situations disrupt his routine and then how he deals with that, I guess. Uh, and this is very much a character who, um, uh, I mean, I, he deals with everything gracefully, but he definitely is somebody who doesn't want his routine broken. He's like, he's like not obsessed, but he's very much clearly focused on like, he wants things simple and, and routine. I'll, I'll keep using that word routine because that's what this movie's about. It's, it's so much about this character who tries to maintain this simple routine, simple life, really. And I think that's uh, a big purpose for making the movie is to portray that kind of uh, experience in life. Uh, but yeah, here we go. So I'm just going to go ahead and hop in at this point. Um, there's other stuff to look at, but we will start with the most interactive part of this website, which is the scrolling book with sound. Now, I'm trying, I'll, I'll read through this because I think staying silent for the whole length of this thing and we're going to look at the whole thing. I encourage anyone, I'll have the link for to this website in the description. Check it out for yourself if you want the not talky version of it. I'm going to read through this as we go because I'm not going to sit here in silence otherwise. And uh, let's go. So there's the interactive portion. You can see that it interacts with the mouse and you could do swirly Komorebi uh, stuff. Komorebi is a concept. Actually, I'll read and talk later. Hirayama seems to be repeating the same things over and over again. But for him, no two days are ever the same. Each one always brings something new. Morning slowly unfurls. No one has noticed yet. No one else noticed yet except for falling leaves, 
something something. I already lost my track. The sound of the bamboo broom reaches the old building second floor. We're gonna skip to the next paragraph. Did the sun form his deep wrinkles? Where was it age? Is he was always gazing into the distance? Without warning, Hiriyama gets up. He folds his thin sleeping mat, goes downstairs, and starts getting ready for the day. Washes his face, shaves with the shaver he's used for decades, and trims his mustache with a pair of scissors. These perfectly efficient movements seem to be a long-standing routine. He grabs a spray bottle in the kitchen and returns to the second floor. Perhaps because the stairs are steep, or wanting to minimize the creaking, he ascends on his tiptoes. A purple light shines at the back of the room where he was sleeping. It is a light for plants. For saplings of different sizes, a handmade pot, created by opening a hole in the bottom of a teacup, holds a small maple sapling. Its leaves are made more magnificent by its diminutive size. After carefully watering the maple, Hiriyama flicks the leaves. He puts on his blue work uniform, he takes a flip phone, a small film camera, his car keys, and some change off a small shelf next to the front door from left to right and puts them in his pockets. Looking up at today's sky, he craps, cracks a slight smile. He then buys a can of sweetened coffee from the parking lot vending machine. For years, this is, us, this is all he's had for breakfast. The rearview mirror is trained on his eyes. As always, the mirror in the eyes of the mirror look like someone else's to him. He reaches to the shelf above the driver's seat and grabs a few random cassette tapes. Inspecting them, he thinks about which one to play, and I lost that one. He slides his selection halfway into the player, then steps on the gas. When the car emerges with traffic, he sees a sky tree and pushes the cassette in all the way. His short journey begins. To the usual intersection, the usual traffic signal, the usual police box, the usual expressway, the usual river, the usual parks, the usual buildings, and the usual public toilets. He carries his cleaning equipment, checks the stalls, and puts on his gloves. He has repeated the same routine for years, so he does everything in a fluid motion. Drink when you hear the word routine in this video. Making dirty things clean, returning a negative to zero, cleaning work somehow resembles aesthetic training. As he quietly repeats his routine, the voice inside him quiets. Following a routine calms the mind. He meets the homeless man who was always in the park. Sometimes their eyes meet. Every time, he feels like the homeless man sees through him. Can he be the only one who sees this homeless man? When he finishes cleaning all the toilets, he reports to the company and takes the same route back home. He gets home in the evening. The night is still young. He gets on his bicycle and goes to the bathhouse. He likes the hot water of a freshly drawn bath. He then pops in at his regular ba basement pub. Without having to ask, the usual is brought out to him. He grabs a drink and cucumber and looks around at the regulars engrossed in a baseball game. But he's somewhere far away. Everything is somewhere far away. Somewhere far away. And he feels comfortable with this distance. He, re he returns to his apartment and continu continues reading his book. It's interesting, just as a used bookseller said. It wasn't popular in its time, but it's a good one. Getting farsighted, he needs glasses for with a stronger prescription. Before long, he wonders if he should keep reading, or just give in to sleep. He turns off his reading lamp and closes his eyes. Somewhere in the distance, a single gust of wind blows by. And I wasn't doing it enough, but there's more of the interactive, wibbly-wobbly graphic stuff they did. Um, and that's it. That's, that is the 353 days of uh, Hiroyama. And the idea is that and really, the movie shows this, exactly. Day one of the movie is depicting this guy's life uh, when the routine is spot on, when nothing has interrupted him, everything has gone as the way, everything's gone the way he wants it, um, and, he, and everything I just read through, mostly read through. If we were doing a 100% run, I think I failed to read, what, 30%, 20% maybe of all that? We, we got most of the way there. But anyway, yeah, this guy's routine is big, uh, and that that uh, write-up, essay, poem, maybe a poem, that that whole thing, uh, all that text describes the first day of the movie, which sets up what is the routine, and then the rest of the movie is about, uh, well, what if things don't work out for this guy, or things, you know, well, no, they always work out for him in the movie, but what if things just kind of interrupt or disrupt this routine, and, you know, how does it go about it? That's it. I think that's it for this experience. I don't, we can hang out and poke around for Easter eggs, but I don't think there's anything else in this portion of the website. So yeah, their title again is Days of Hirayama. There it is on the left. Let's get that highlight out of there. I'm going to give it 10 more seconds, just in case something else happens here, which I don't think it is going to happen. It's, it's neat. Maybe we should do 10 seconds of silence. How's that? Let's do it.
All right, that's about 10 seconds. Uh, here we have an index because there's more to this website than just the interactive part. So, oh, look at that. I never noticed before that the logo has a little tree root deal going on with the T here because uh, trees are huge. I don't. I think I mentioned the concept of Komorebi. Uh, it's it's a apparently it's a Japanese concept. Maybe it's just the the term they chose for this, but it's the visual effect of light streaming through tree through uh, leaves of trees and the kind of the weird shadows you get out of that where you get some and, and, and it's all wiggly right because the, the leaves are moving and the sign lights going through uh, and that's why there were all these images of leaves and trees <laughs> because he will he actually this character literally just takes a camera with him every day and snaps photos of uh, these moments in time and then he collects these photos uh, and I think any I, I come from the realm of video games where there's a lot of collecting, so uh, I connected to that immediately as well. I connected, I connected to a lot of stuff in this movie. Like That was maybe why I'm speaking about the movie at all here, is um, some of this movie is like, oh, that's my life. They captured my life. Not quite to this degree, but it's, uh, I don't know, maybe in 20 or 30 years, I'll, I'll be this guy. Um, but yeah, so there's uh, some explanations of the visuals and what was going on there. Here we have the rest of the website, which we can poke at. I'm not going to go through it in depth. Um, also here, it's in Japanese and English. V very uh, grateful to them that it, they put it in English because now I can actually understand some of these things. So I, I will click through all of these um, segments or things here and uh, we will not watch everything, but we'll watch some bits here and there. So first of all, if we have some words from, first off, we have some words from the director, Vim Vendors. Uh, let's see what he has to say. Oh, we have... No, these are, these are the bios. So, yeah, he took a documentarian's, documentarian's approach to this fiction. Looking back on his career, it seems he was meant to create this film. Uh, here's a Wikipedia bio about the guy. Uh, he has a long career, a lot of movies. I've only, uh, I've only seen Paris, Texas, I think. is the only other Vim Vendors movie I've seen. I, I should be compelled to watch more of his work, having, you know being into perfect days to the degree that I am here is it is in 2023 uh wow two movies in 23 for this for this director uh so I loved perfect days I liked Paris Texas I don't remember feeling about it the way I feel feel about perfect days but I know it was good but here we have a little scroll through of uh our huge filmography this director his there it is Paris Texas uh yeah I know a lot of these movies are pretty uh pretty famous I think in the yeah, Paris, Texas is a big one. Oh, another another Japanese-based movie there, Tokyo Ga. I need to watch that. So yeah, he's got a lot, got a lot of stuff. So there, there's that. Let's see how what else we can do. Oh, all right, this is great. Now we can just click through each one. So now we can go to Koji Yakusho, the guy who plays Hirayama in the movie. A brilliant actor who brings uh, Hirayama and the 353 days of Hirayama's life not portrayed in the film to life. Without him, this film would not have been made. Yeah, uh, I mean, I guess we can imagine other actors in this role, but he just, he does such a good job. And it's such a, it's a very subtle performance. If you're looking for a big drama, big like outbursts or anything, it's not that. This guy is so chill. Uh, it's, yeah, that's all I can say, really. It's, he's a very chill dude. Like everything about him is chill. At one point, uh, his, his, a company saddles him with like extra work shifts and he does get upset that's the biggest emotional outburst we see from him is him calling his company to complain that like they need to send someone else out because he's not going to do two shifts so you do see him angry as well but uh, but yeah it's a very very uh understated performance i'd say uh and hey, here's his bio about some of the stuff he's done some of his awards yeah i know i mean we'll scroll through awards but i think if we get to 2023 and 24 we'll see that um Damn, in 97, he did something people loved. Several somethings. All right, let's just go through. Because, uh, yeah, so this guy is a much beloved actor. I know Japan loves him as well. People have been super up, you know, thrilled about um, the reception to, un to Perfect Days. I know people think, like, yeah, this guy deserves every award. He's amazing. But here you can see, oh, that's it? Wow. I know he won the Khan Best Actor Award. Um but I'm surprised that's it. Well, in any case, the movie did well in Japan. Just know that. All right, so that's the actor. Uh, what else do we have? We have the trailer. Should we watch the whole trailer? 
Should we do? Should we sit here and watch a trailer? Let's watch the short, short, shortest possible trailer. Let's watch the 15 second one. Why not? Just a perfect day. Drink sangria in the park. Okay, that was too short. I'll do the 30 seconds as well, just so you can. For anyone who's watched this far and doesn't want to just go watch the trailer themselves, I will play one more, just so you can see more scenes. But, I mean, it's basically everything I read and everything I've described, which is this guy is very chill. Oh! While we're hearing this music, that's another vital component to the movie is the soundtrack. Holy crap. What was that? Well, these are all Japanese trailers, so I can't follow that, of course, but in any case, um, soundtrack. Soundtracks, uh, it's, it's all just a, it's like a handful, maybe a bit more than a handful of selected works from like the 70s, maybe the 80s, um, because this guy is really into his cassette tapes. He only has a cassette player in his car. And uh, I guess this is just the stuff he was into. And so he, the movie, uh, all the music in the movie is from him playing his tapes in his car. Or or one performance that's live. But is playing a, uh, she's singing a song that he loves from this era anyway. So yeah, the soundtrack is another huge component. And I think we'll see more of the soundtrack uh, later. Hold on. Huh? Did we get that short? There it is. All right, so we did the director, the actor, the trailer, introduction story. Oh, here's a kind of overview of what this is. It's, uh, again, kind of a documentary style movie where you just follow someone around. I, I Again, I call it a character portrait because that's, that's what it is. It's a portrait of this, this guy. Um, oh, there, there goes the concept of Komorebi. Like wind in the trees, unexpected events shake a man's placid life, creating an interplay of shadow and light. Oh, that's, that is a way more poetic for, way to say what I was saying earlier. Uh, yeah, kind of the, the plot, the setup is this guy works as a public toilet cleaner. Uh, he looks at the sky a lot. Holy crap, does he look at the sky a whole lot. Uh, it, again, drink when you hear the word routine and drink when you see him look up at the sky because he loves to do that. And that's another reason this movie felt like a mirror to me because I, I do that constantly. Uh, I don't know if I don't know if it's just a human thing. Other people do that a lot too. I do it a ton because I think um, the, the sky and what's going on above is way more interesting than what's going on down here on Earth. Um, and I think this movie touches on that exactly. What When somebody is so into not being a part of the world that they like just, their mind just wanders off into other places. And I think this movie is kind of highlighting someone who's like that. Uh, yeah, he runs into all these different characters and people um, very lightly. I, I, I've seen most people regard the movie as like this beautiful portrayal of like a poetic, ascetic life. You know, someone who's very chill and mellow and just kind of lives, is into the simple things. And I think there's much to admire about that. But then some people did have a criticism about how this guy's, uh, this is a portrait of someone who lacks ambition. And, you know, he, he runs away from everyone and all his relationships are very superficial um, and that's true. He all his, Every relationship you see with him in the movie is superficial. He has a family. He has a sister he hasn't talked to in a long time because they don't get along. Um, he meets, he reunites with his niece in the movie and she, he hasn't seen her for years and years. So even with the people who, you know, our family who he would have a close relationship with, or most, most, most of us would, he doesn't. He keeps his distance basically and yeah, the movie gets into all these all these things. So, so I guess whether or not you criticize that aspect of his life uh, is up to the person, right? Each each of us brings our perspective into interpreting the, what we see in the movie. All right, let's go into the cast. Oh, Min Tanaka. Who's I I don't know Min Tanaka except the movie really makes a point to highlight that uh, he's a famous like he's a he's a special guest actor, and I I think they point out or I read that he's a, like a dancer. He's like a famous dancer in Japan. People know who he is. Uh, yeah, we already looked at his profile. We don't need to go into uh, Koji Yakusho again. Oh, hey, the movie's gonna, this thing's gonna tell you everything you need to know. 
Uh, oh, that we know about the character. Right. This is the niece. Who, by the way, this actress... And I don't mean to point out age too much, but almost every actor in this movie is way older than the what you get from the characters. So, like, in the movie, this character is like a teenager, like an, a teenage niece. Uh, in real life, I believe she's in her 30s, or is 30. Like, it's like, poof, and they fit. You don't notice in the movie, but um, looking up the actors afterward, I did note, like, oh, yeah, most of these actors are significantly older than the characters they portray in the movie. So just a funny note on uh, on good casting, I guess. Right? Because obviously an actress in her 30s will have a certain uh, experience, I guess, to bring to the role. I don't know. What do I know about acting and casting? All right. Yeah, Takashi, he's a... Uh, yeah, Hirayama's co-worker. He's... Um, I guess he's the comedy relief. Not to... And not in a bad way. Uh, he does... He is a more animated person uh in the movie and he's he's very like emotional and like he really is a big dramatic sort of character so he's a uh, he kind of brings a little more levity to the to the movie uh Aya, that's uh takashi the girl takashi is into um and the, she has a really nice moment with uh, hiriyama as well as they as they kind of bond i guess over music cassette music specifically so it's it's a good couple of scenes keiko that's the sister who has like one scene in the movie when she has to come pick up the niece, but it's, oh, it is a scene, brother, who, yeah, when, actually, yes, I was about to skip over this, like, yeah, it's just the sister, no, the, when, when she shows up, uh, and here, and Hiriyama have their, like, little reunion, and they, again, they haven't talked or seen each other in years, it is a, it is a scene, that is, that is when you're like, oh, yeah, this guy's not, uh, he's very chill most of the time, but he's got, what is that still waters run deep sort of thing like he's got some depth and he's got some stuff going on that like he just really i think probably works hard to keep tamped down and yeah the scene with her really brings it out it's really good mama is uh she runs a bar that hiriyama loves to go to um and yeah you you kind of get that there's a connection there but again because hiriyama keeps his distance from everybody it's like an unrealized connection i guess where where um I don't know. It's it's a thing where like you you're thinking like, hey, you should y'all should talk more. You, sh you you seem to be getting along. Tomoyama, it's another character with a very brief scene or brief few minutes with Hiroyama in the film, but they have a really meaningful scene uh, together. Uh, it's 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 great. Uh, <laughs> their stuff's really amazing toward the end of the movie, uh, and then yeah, the rest of the cast because there are a lot of people in the movie that uh, run into Hiroyama. All right, staff. What do we got for staff? Probably director. Yeah, again, Vim Vendors, famous director. He's done a lot of stuff. Um, oh, yeah. Actually, it's worth noting, yeah, Vim Vendors was co-writer. Because obviously this is a Japanese movie. Vim Vendors is a German filmmaker. So uh, he pointed out that he felt he couldn't make this movie unless he had a fellow uh, screenwriter to who is Japanese to really give it that, you know, you know authenticity and, like, realness of somebody who lives there is, is of the place I can provide that that voice and that that unique perspective. So yeah, Takuma Takasaki is the co-writer uh, and producer as well. And then a bunch of producers were involved. Um, you can see here, yeah, again, written by Vim Vendors, co rather co-written by Vim Vendors and Takuma Takasaki. Uh, some other folks, lots of producers. You can look at the rest of the staff if you're interested. Interview. This is really actually. I, I, cl I claim to love this movie, but I haven't done this yet. I need to go through and watch all of these great interview questions. Uh, we can talk. About, we can click on one just to see what it's like to do that. The first time I ever noticed Koji Akushu was in Shelby Dance. And I saw the film three times in a row because I really wanted to know how he achieved this lightness of being. Okay, well, there you go. That, that, that one, one of these is 17 minutes. Uh, I need to go back and watch them all because I think they're probably going to give me a lot more uh, appreciation for the work that goes in. But So yeah, it's just the, this is a bunch of interviews with the director talking about the movie and, uh, uh, and his artistic thoughts, I guess, about the actors and the performances. Uh, Koji Yakusho, let's see how long his is. Let's let's get a few minutes. 14 minutes. 
Let's say. That's interesting. He, him as himself, is definitely, um, I don't know, more. His his voice is like an octave higher. Like uh, Hiryama in the movie, he's just very like. He's not deep voiced, but he is a very like, like like what's the term? Not laconic. Uh, he's a he's a he's a person who doesn't talk a lot. That's that's a huge point in the movie. You don't hear him speak in the movie for like, I don't know, man, like 15, 20 minutes or something. Like you're just following him around for a while before he finally says words to another person or to anybody. Um, and, and you can see there, like when you watch the movie and then watch that some of that interview, uh, it's clear the actor really has, was channeling something that's not him, like, or rather that is different from his own personality, which is, I guess, that's what acting is about, right? So. So there you go. So there's uh, some stuff with him. Uh, interesting how they're both very like, at least in his interviews, they're both very like thinking and speaking slowly about their thoughts on the movie. Like that that way that certain people have of speaking, which obviously is not me. I talk very fast and I just want to zip through. Uh, so yeah, the rest of the cast and crew who gave interviews, Min Tanaka, did they, yeah, none of these... Yeah, here you go. His perspective as a dancer. So yeah, he's a dancer. Uh, and that fits with the, this character in the movie, this homeless man in the movie, who's always just kind of like dancing, looking up at the sky. There goes that uh, what motif. There goes that visual, or again, of somebody kind of just looking up at the sky to see what's, what's going on up there. All right, so there's interview section of the site. Theater. Uh, I, know, I'll, I know what theater is, but we won't, we won't go there yet. Um, collection. Here we go. So this is where we can finally just look at the soundtrack. The amazing soundtrack. They they made some really good choices. I am definitely going to have this soundtrack among my what I listen to. And I, I, name it, I mean this soundtrack. Like this collection of songs together. Because it, it will evoke this you know movie that I love so much. Uh, so yeah, the soundtrack only contains music Hiriyama listens to. He always plays cassettes with the songs he fell in love with long ago. Hey man, now that I'm I'm 41, so I'm getting into that zone where you you start you do start to kind of hone in on like no, I liked this music from this time or these movies from this time or these video games from a certain time period, and then you, and you stay there. Well, not necessarily stay there to the degree that this character does, because this guy he's stuck. He's ver or he's very focused on like this window of of, of of creativity when he's like that's that's the music i want and that's the, the stuff i'm into so um but yeah I, I i get it i get when people finally say it when when people say this is the this is the stuff i like and that's that's all i need i, I get that completely these days uh so yeah from here from his perspective what would he be listening to here this is where we find his routine in which he takes pleasure in the small coincidences that flow from the tapes uh lou reed lou reed is huge he's He's got to have at least multi, more than one song. Uh, so yeah, How's the Rising Sun? Uh, we hear mul that multiple times, actually. Perfo we hear the original, and then we hear someone else perform it live in the movie, like singing it. Oh, that's not true. I mix up my songs. I think How's the Rising Sun... Is that the first? Anyway, I won't try to remember where these movie the songs played. Just know that they are in the movie. Uh, cassette tapes, there's a, there's actually a scene in the movie where he goes to a cassette tape shop because uh, where everyone's going on about like, oh, cassettes are back and we love cassette tapes. So, uh, oh, some of these songs go back to the 60s. Is that what I just saw? Yeah, 69, 64, yeah, 64. So yeah, they, they go back pretty far. Um, yeah, that's it's worth noting. There's one song that's like a, a Japanese song and it's this one. Uh, I suck, I O E. Oh, I won't try to pronounce that, it's, but it, apparently it means bluefish, and uh, it was really—it's really good. It, it shows up in the movie when he's on the expressway somewhere. Oh, I was right about "How's the Rising Sun," though. They play the original, and then yeah, they play a live version performed by uh, the actress whose name is not shown here for some reason. But it's really good. It's a really good performance. Uh, 
yeah so yeah some van morrison in there feeling good that's the finale song yes perfect day shows up in the movie feeling good is the song they play at the end which is another like sort of scene like this song is playing hirayama's driving and it goes on for a while and i I won't even tell you what happens it just you gotta watch it it's really good uh, and there you go. So they, yeah, they go over the soundtrack uh, he's into. He is reading throughout the movie, so it's worth noting that as well. This, I'm really confused here, because the movie starts off with him reading this Faulkner book, Wild Palms. Uh, midway through the movie, he picks up this new book called Trees, which is a collection of essays. Ah, here we go. Actually, I'll read this. Novel of two interwoven stories published in 1939, What's the first book here Yama would fall asleep reading? Without hesitation, when vendors immediately said, probably Faulkner. Faulkner has no new paperbacks. They're only found in secondhand bookstores. Of course. <laughs> uh, the spaces between lines and paperbacks then were very narrow. Perfect for falling asleep while reading. Yeah, they're tiny books too. I don't know if that's a thing in Japan that for paperbacks to be so tiny. But these are very small books, like pocket books almost. You can fit it in your pocket. All right, so Trees by Ayakoda. Um... The man Hirayama is like a tree. He loves komorebi. There's that term. The sunlight filtering through the trees and nurtures saplings. Yeah, at one point he like... uh, They show it that in his house he like is growing these tree saplings, you know, just on various pots. And then at one point he digs one out of the ground because he adds to his collection. Uh, Collecting. Collecting is a huge thing in this this, uh, movie. He has a ton of books, a ton of cassette tapes. Uh, He collects those photographs. Like physically, he... He takes photographs on film and keeps a, a elaborate record of each month's worth of photographs in a tin box. And he has a closet full of them. So he's been doing this for years, for who knows how many years. Um, uh, so anyway, I got distracted. What was I talking about? Oh, the trees, the saplings, yeah. He would undoubtedly love reading this essay. It's a book with palpably, palpably excellent writing from a refined viewpoint within short text. It teaches one the joy of reading a book. Just like I'm going to download... I'm going to... Sorry obtain this soundtrack and have my own collected version of it i'm also going to absolutely read these books i i need to know what this dude was reading in this movie because he was so into them uh and then this last one uh, 11 by patricia highsmith um uh great writer i've read highsmith before i i know i would appreciate like anything she writes uh but yeah she's a master of suspense novels with deep associations with with vendors such as real Peace game the Terrapin, which appears in the film, is a story of cruelty inflicted on a, by a boy named Victor. Yeah, there's a big plot point or story point in the movie where the niece, his niece, is like, I identify with this character. And specifically this character named Victor, which, by the way, is my name. Uh, she identifies with this guy who apparently inflicts cruelty. So I don't know what that means. But uh, Hirayama in the movie is like, don't say that. You don't, you don't want to be like this character. Uh, and the other note I have on this uh, there's a fourth book obtained in the movie, also by Patricia Highsmith, and it's not shown here. I'm going to have to watch the movie again and like take screenshots to figure out what the fourth book was, but it was another Patricia Highsmith book. Oh, no. It. Oh, wow. It just hit me what happened there. So he's buying this fourth book, this final book in the movie. It's Patricia Highsmith, and I think it's him repurchasing the book called Eleven, because he gave his copy to his niece. The, the niece has to leave at some point. Her mom comes to pick her up. Uh, and um, she says, like, oh, I haven't finished reading the book. I think she wants to stay. She's looking for an excuse to stay. And he tells her, like, oh, just take it with you. And, again, such a, such a collection-minded person. So his niece took his book. And then he immediately goes out and buys a replacement. So that his collection wouldn't be uh, missing that one book. Wow, I can't believe I just that just dawned on me. I watched it again like 10 times, 9 times, and uh, that that just hit me. So that's cool. So there you go. So that now it makes sense why there's only three books here. Because uh, he was just repurchasing the book that he uh, had already had in his collection. All right, well, I think that's basically the... Let's look and click on theater if you like, but uh, it's just uh, showing you where if you're in Japan, you can go watch this movie. Uh, look at those dates. Look at, how, look at how far out they go to May 3rd, April 26th. Like, I'm recording this in early April, so yeah, in Japan, I guess, it's still going. 
Uh, and truth be told, I've watched it nine times. I'd love to watch it a tenth time in the theater. So I will also be combing through all my show times to see if I can get one more screening uh, somewhere. Uh, all right, let's, um, yeah, let's get out of there, go back here, and bloop. That's it, though. We can go back to the, the home page because that's the end of my look at uh, Perfect Days, 353 Days of Hirayama, a website which is uh, certainly interactive as websites are was that was the scrolling book with sound interactive enough to call it a game uh again only i guess the only gamification you can do is what i tried to do is read it all out loud uh i didn't achieve i didn't 100 percent that but I, I can try that on my next run i think that's gonna be it for this though i'm just waiting for the scenes to re-scroll here before i say uh that's gonna be it thanks for watching uh, I'm coming up on some videos. Uh, as always, I, 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 can I say what they are? I don't know. I'm always, I have a big list of things, um, like Hiriyama. I collect a lot of things, and then I, I just kind of pick out, like, oh, let's do this series, or let's do this license. So uh, I'll do something for sure. But uh, yeah, that's going to be it for this particular video. Thanks for watching. Uh, and yeah, until next time, I'll see you.